What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about 2x4 framing versus 2x6 framing. Now, uh, I literally just broke my microphone. It just dropped on the ground. It broke off my stand and it now no longer works. It sounds like I'm uh, talking through a snake's mouth. It's like so I apologize, but I am on my um, laptop speakers, which is less than stellar, but I will get a new microphone or maybe fix that one if I can and uh, my audio will be better. But I've been asked a lot of questions, so I'm actually gonna start making a couple of these videos, uh, just answering some just pretty widespread questions. Um, so today I'm addressing two by four framing versus two by six framing. Now you guys know the house that I recently built, the off-grid build, you guys can look at that on the playlist, uh, off-grid playlist or off-grid retold um, or solo build, any of those. You can see that I framed this house that I'm actually sitting in right now, two by four framing. People made fun of me, they're like, oh my gosh, you're framing two by four, you're an idiot, you don't know anything. Um, and I would have to flip that on anyone who says that uh, because it's kind of, there's, there's one main reason why you would frame two by four versus two by, or two by six versus two by four. Um, now I'm just gonna dive right into it. The number one reason, and in my opinion, the only reason on a minor residential scale that you would choose to frame two by six over two by four is if you are trying to get cavity insulation up to R21, R19 to R21, I guess. That's the only reason I would frame two by six over two by four unless I was doing three story, four story, um, major vaulted ceilings with a really, really heavy, heavy roof, potentially, you know, some type of, you know, uh, um, tiles or something. Other than that, there's no reason for it. Two by fours can withstand up to, I think it's over, let me, let me double check so I don't misquote this, right? Up to 1,820 pounds per two by four when sheathed. Now, I don't know if you know much about framing. There's no way you're putting 1,800 pounds on a single two by four. Now imagine this, you have 40 foot or, or 42 by four, 16 inches on center, a double top plate, and somehow you gotta stack 1,800 pounds on, on each of those two by fours. It's most, it's almost impossible if you're doing a single story. It might possibly happen if you're doing a two story, most likely not, because people think, oh, 1,800 pounds is not a lot. That's 1,800 pounds per two by four. The load above a wall is being dispersed out across that top plate to all two by fours. It's not just gonna hit one. So it's just highly unlikely. If you have a 40 foot wall, you have over, what, 60,000, I don't even, I can't even do the math, 1,800 pounds times 40, um, or, or 18, yeah, 1,800 times 40, whatever that is, that's the load that you have on that wall that you can put on top of that wall. It's a lot, it's a lot. So when people are like, oh, why'd you frame with two by fours? Your building's gonna be weak. Uh, sorry, you're an idiot. No, it's not. Like that's just not even not even the case. There's no additional shear value to a two by six uh, because the the lumber doesn't actually give you shear value. That comes down to the actual uh, uh, sheathing, whether you go uh, seven sixteenths or five eighths, whatever you do. Uh, that's where the shear value comes in. Uh, the wall is purely structural to hold whatever is sitting on top of it. Um, now, when you get into trusses, yes, you can gain strength when you are putting two by four versus two by six horizontally. Obviously you have more meat there, you have more uh, re uh, um, resistance to uh, deflection. So obviously, yeah, there's there's a case to be argued there, but when it comes to standard stick framing, two by six, in my opinion, the only reason you wanna go for it is if you're doing a massive, massive build, even then you most likely don't need it, or if you're just trying to get the R value inside of that cavity because you have five and a quarter versus three and a half inches. Now, I want to talk briefly about why I also find the R value of 2x6 framing also kind of dumb. Okay, so for example, if you guys know what thermal bridging is. So for example, I wish I had pictures up here, but I don't. Thermal bridging is basically heat transferring through some type of member, framing member, whatever, and entering the other or, or, or reaching the other side of that member. So you have a 2x6 wall. Imagine this is your 2x6 heat hits this side of the two by six, the heat is going to transfer through, it's going to basically go through that, that two by six, and it's going to exit through the alternative side, which is usually the cooler or the warmer side, depending on whatever's going on. So when you frame with two by six framing and you're like, yeah, I got R21 or R19 in my cavity, that's true. But what you don't realize is that I think 
almost 20 to 25 percent of your home is wood like if you were to take all the wood that you use to frame your walls and you just slammed it all together and held it just stack one after another 25 percent of your home or so would just be wood which is just a thermal bridge for heat to get into your home right because what's on the inside of that two by four two by six most likely just drywall drywall has no thermal value or or, or no r value you know so you're you're letting 25 percent of your home have heat transfer from the outside to the inside of your home that's a problem to me in my eyes the way i frame this house that i'm sitting in right now with the perfect wall system kind of um, is I had two by four framing, which people mocked me for, which is okay. I understand ignorance is bliss. And then I had R15 Rockwell insulation. You could do spray foam. It doesn't matter. Uh, Rockwell was just my preference on this one. R15 Rockwell on the inside and then an inch and a half of poly ISO on the outside, right? So poly ISO is about, uh, R six and a half per inch. So overall I'm sitting at around, I don't know, R24, R25, somewhere around there on my two by four frame wall. But hear me out, my R23, 24, 25 is significantly higher than any two by six framed home that's R21. Why is that? It's because I removed the thermal bridging of 25% of my home, okay? With the exterior insulation on the outside of my pathetic little two by four framed walls, I am stopping the heat from transferring through that framing member and getting into my cavity thus getting a blanket of insulation rather than just a cavity filled insulation uh, uh, build. So when you think about it, in next video I do, I'll have, I'll have some diagrams that I can put up here. But if you can put 20, R21 in your cavity when you frame uh, two by six, that's great, that's awesome, I'm not knocking it. But if you can frame two by four, take that excess money, which is not really a huge portion of money saved, but you could take that extra portion of money, put it towards exterior blanket and insulation, which removes your thermal bridging of your studs, you now have continuous insulation around your whole house. You are stopping that heat from coming through your framing members. You also have your cavity R15 on the interior, and you're getting a much more, a much highly, a higher performing home is the way to say it, a highly performance build without having to do two by six framing okay so any builder that's like oh yeah you got to get two by six framing because of the r value ask him hey could i do two by four framing and take that savings and put it towards exterior insulation and do it that way because you're going to get a higher r value you're going to get a more efficient home even though you are framing with two by four so that's what i would say about two by four versus two by six i personally i don't see a need in framing two by six like i said unless you have a massive build uh, you can if you want. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying the reason is for our value, not for strength. That's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, please smash the like button, uh, share it, uh, follow me, subscribe. If you guys haven't, um, you can check me out on Instagram. I'm thinking if it should pop up down here somewhere. Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, kind of on Pinterest. Um, and uh, I'll be dropping new videos. If you guys have any questions, if you want me to do a video on something, Leave it in the comments below, and I'll answer your questions with a video if, if I can or if I think it's a common question. Um, and, yeah, guys, I appreciate your time. Much love, y'all.